So how much does it cost to 1UZ V8 swap your rig? Let's talk about that. Brought to you in part by Alpine Toyota. The Toyota slash Lexus 1UZ FE V8 is a four liter all aluminum block, six bolt main bearing caps, dual overhead cam, 32 valve, boasting up to 290 horsepower and up to 300 foot pounds of torque. And the best part, it only weighs 390 pounds. And right now, the market for these 1UZs seem to be at its prime. The Lexus cars these engines are commonly found in, be it the SC400 or the LS400, are starting to get pretty old. And with that being said, they're starting to rust away. Either that, or you'll find they need a ton of maintenance that would actually cost more than the car is worth. Landing these cars and their engines in auto wreckers everywhere. Or better yet, you can find complete cars on Marketplace going really cheap. Now the most ideal way of acquiring a 1UZ is from getting a complete car. Mostly because you can see it running or get it running in the car and prove that it works great before swapping it over. This way you will also guarantee that you have everything you need as far as sensors, power steering pump, alternator, it's all there and ready to be moved into whatever project you plan on one UZ swapping. And as I just mentioned, you can find these complete cars pretty cheap. I've seen them as low as $1,000 and up to about $2,500 on the cheap end. Like this one here perfect for a 1UZ swap. The first 1UZ that I picked up was actually from an auto wrecker and it belonged to a 1995 SC400 and they shipped the complete engine with harness and ECM complete for just 800 bucks. And unfortunately, as I'm sure some of you guys know, that engine didn't last very long. On the first couple of times starting it, the timing belt actually slipped and the 95 up 1UZs were actually an interference engine, meaning when the timing belt slipped, it bent valves. And that brings me to the second 1UZ I picked up. This one was from a 1992 LS400 and it cost me just 400 bucks, but it was a mess. It was very incomplete. Now it came with the harness and the ECM, but they were not in very good condition. The harness had a ton of broken plugs and broken wires. So before I could do anything with it, I had to strip that engine harness completely apart and essentially rebuild it. And luckily for me, I had this other 1UZ I previously bought. So for alternator power steering pump and all that junk, I just unbolted it from my other one and bolted it onto the LS400 engine. So for this one, I guess you could say it sort of worked out, but luckily I had that other uh, 1UZ. But for the sake of the video and giving you guys a firm number on what one of these 1UZ swaps would actually cost you, I'm gonna go for the junkyard price. So let's say 800 bucks for the engine. Now, if you're running a used engine from a junkyard, I would highly recommend doing some general maintenance stuff to it before you drop it into the engine bay. Because at the end of the day, these engines are up to 30 years old and can use some maintenance just to make it run top notch. So start up your rock auto cart and let's get through this list. A new starter, 140 bucks. Distributor caps, 15 bucks each. Distributor rotors, five bucks each. All eight spark plugs, 50 bucks. Spark plug wires, 70 bucks. Timing belt kit with water pump and tensioners, 235 bucks. Injector seals, 20 bucks and very important. Valve cover gasket set, $17. Intake and throttle body gasket, 25 bucks. And lastly, exhaust manifold gasket, 30 bucks. Totaling up to $665. Now obviously this step is totally optional. You can very likely just run these motors as they came and not need to throw any parts at it right away. But just be prepared because you're most likely gonna need to do some maintenance in the future. For example, I decided to save a few bucks by not replacing my starter initially and I wish I did because only a couple of wheeling trips in and it failed me. So you, you choose what you wanna do there. <laughs> Next up is oil pan and this is also optional-ish. My truck is solid axle swapped and it required a rear sump oil pan to clear my front diff and steering. Luckily, the LS400 engines come with a rear sump oil pan. Unfortunately, I owned the SC400 first, so I ended up buying a used LS400 oil pan on eBay for 385 bucks. This is something I knew nothing about before going into the 1UZ swap. I didn't know that there's different oil pans between each model of engine that they came from. And if I did, I probably would have just got an LS400 engine to start. So if your setup is similar to mine, save yourself a bit of money and 
find an LS400. So now that we've talked about how you can find a 1UZ and what you need to do to kind of freshen it up and get it ready to go in the truck, let's discuss what you actually need to mount it, starting with the transmission. My truck originally was the 3 liter V6 and behind the 3 liter V6 you will find an R150 if you have the manual transmission option. And if you have an R150 like me, you're in luck. There is several companies that make R150 to 1UZ adapter plates or bell housing kits. I personally opted for the KS Racing bell housing kit from eBay. It is a super complete kit. It comes with a bell housing, the flywheel, the, the clutch disc, the pressure plate. It comes with the clutch fork. It comes with the clutch fork pivot, the throw up bearing, the pilot bearing, the input shaft extension. It also comes with a little spacer that comes in behind the pilot bearing. The kit literally comes with everything you need to bolt the 1UZ up to your R150, it's, it's fantastic. I purchased this kit for $1,384 off eBay, which I think is a pretty good deal considering everything is included. And now that the engine and transmission is sorted out, let's talk about mounting it in your truck. Coming from the block of the 1UZs, there's these cast aluminum pieces that have one hole in them. And what I did is I took this piece and I went into an auto parts store and looked through their whole selection of engine mounts, trying to find something that would work in my specific use case. And what I figured out is that 4BT engine mounts actually line up and slide right into those aluminum mounts perfectly. And then what I had to do from there is get some quarter inch steel and then make some actual mounts off my frame for these rubber 4BT engine mounts to sit on. And these Cummins 4BT engine mounts cost about 80 bucks. And for the quarter inch steel, I had a bunch laying around, so that part, for me anyways, was essentially free. And as for the transmission, you're probably thinking, oh, I'm using the stock manual transmission, it should just bolt into place. Uh, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> Unfortunately, the 1UZ doesn't really fit in the engine bay as is with the transmission in the stock location. In my case, I moved it back two and three quarter inches just to fit the radiator. And what I did is I used that same quarter inch steel that I used for the engine mounts and I cut it into plates. That would then sandwich in between your cross member and your frame rail and kind of offset the mounts. And then with that, I just re-drilled the holes in my dual transfer case cross member so that I could at least line up two of the holes in the factory mounts straight into the cross member and the other two mounts are offset with that plate. This plate was then welded to the bottom of my cross member to make it all super stout. It was essentially free because I used scrap steel that I already had laying around. And next up, let's talk about the radiator. So obviously the V8 is much bigger than the V6 that it used to be running. So a cooling system overhaul slash upgrade is definitely required. Now what I did is I picked up this massive three row aluminum radiator that's actually meant for a 1KZ diesel. The beauty about this radiator is it bolts right in place like stock where your V6 radiator would have lived. Because 1KZ diesels were available as an option in this body style truck just not in North America. And this, just like a ton of items on this list, also came from eBay, and it cost me 230 bucks. And to actually move air through the radiator, I picked up dual 10 inch electric fans, and they are set up in the push orientation on the front of the radiator. These guys I picked up off Amazon, and they are just $90. And on the topic of Amazon, I picked up a couple other accessories from Amazon as well, including my air filter, which was $36, and I also picked up an accessory fuse box so that I could run the factory engine harness and ECM, but wire it in a standalone configuration. And this fuse box cost me just 32 bucks. And now down to the exhaust. This, I mostly just cobbled together myself. The headers I used were actually from a 2000 Tundra with the 2UZ engine. The nice part about these headers is they stayed really tight to the engine and just seemed a lot better to use versus the stock 1UZ, considering the space constraints between my frame rails and the engine block. And even that wasn't good enough, I still ended up chopping both sides of the headers and turning them in towards the transmission a little bit, just for that 
little bit of extra clearance. And from there, I made my own custom crossover pipe underneath the transmission collecting at the Y pipe. And luckily for me, I've actually already upgraded my Trex exhaust to a 2.5 inch exhaust pipe connected to a Flowmaster muffler. And this was because before the V8 swap, I actually did the 3-4 swap of my truck and I had a supercharger bolted to the top. So I upgraded the exhaust for some extra flow then. This made it super easy for me to connect from my custom crossover pipe to the existing exhaust. And I would say all together, the exhaust probably cost me around $100 to build. To get this engine actually running, I saved a bunch of money and I did all of the wiring myself. I made the conversion harness, I connected it all to my stock gauges and it works great. And I'm sure there's a bunch of people that are afraid of wiring, don't wanna to touch it, they don't wanna mess up their harnesses. And I don't blame you, <laughs> there's a lot to it. And luckily there is a couple companies that actually make conversion harnesses to put a 1UZ in these old trucks, so you're set there. I also have another video on how to wire Toyota engine swaps specifically. It's a lot more straightforward than you'd think, and if you wanna learn the basics, make sure you check out that video linked in the description below. And then from there, you can decide whether you wanna tackle it yourself or outsource this job. And you can probably tell by now, but doing the 1UZ swap isn't a cheap task by any means. In total, if you bought everything I mentioned in this video, including the engine, the oil pan, the rock auto carts, the bell housing kit, and, then, and all the extras, the entire swap would cost you $3,805 Canadian, or $3,030 USD. If you're in the States, it might even be cheaper because you're not paying nearly as much shipping or duty on a whole lot of these items. And obviously, there is ways to do it cheaper. And the bulk of this money actually depends on what engine you pick up in the first place. For example, you could pick up a super low kilometer 1UZ and maybe not have to spend as much money in extra parts to just kind of freshen it all up. And you would also be saving money by buying an LS400 for the rear sump oil pan that comes with it if you're in a solid axle swap truck like mine. But I hope this video helps give you guys a general idea of how much it would actually cost to do the swap for yourself. This is by far one of my most requested videos to date. And if you guys have any other ideas that you'd like to see me make a video on, make sure you leave your suggestion in the comments below. And hey, if you don't mind, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. We just smashed 20,000 subscribers and you guys are awesome. Anyways guys, we'll see you next week. Peace. I'ma make a couple stacks, do exactly what I want to. Mix a couple tracks, get a lady that I'm drawn to. Turn up to the max, get me faded till I'm gone, dude. I do what I want, couldn't stop me if you wanted to. I just work hard, yeah, harder than the rest. Some people say I'm lucky, others say I'm